How do you replace a leaking micro channel outdoor coil for York package unit? You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, let's get started. I've got all my tools outside near the package unit. I've got my vacuum pump, my refrigerant, my nitrogen, my regulator, my low flow regulator, filter dryer, torches, and then I've got some soap bubbles for testing and some scales. So I'm ready to take the old coil out, remove it, and then replace it with the new coil. The reason that we have a leaking micro channel coil is because we have lack of maintenance. This unit's 11 years old, right out of warranty. So that's a shame. Wish I could have given the customer that coil under warranty, but it was 11 years old. But the reason we have a leak is because we didn't maintenance the outdoor coil. The customer didn't have maintenance, and because of that, we have a leak because that dirt just eats right through the coil. So if you didn't know, if you don't know where the leak is, you can check out the short video that I'll put down below, but right uh, on the other side of where this moss is, this coil's leaking right there. I'll post that video so you can see it. First thing we're gonna do is take the disconnect. We're gonna unplug it. We don't want to have power on the unit while we're taking it apart. Now I'm going to take and disconnect the outdoor fan so that when I pull the top off, those fan wires are not connected. So let's see, where are the fan wires? We got a capacitor, and on the common terminal, we got the purple wire, which is one side of the power for that fan. Then we got on the F terminal, we got the brown wire that comes from the fan. And then we got the black wire on the load side of the contactor. Right there is our three wires and then we've got a ground. So I'll just cut this ground here and then we will take and wire nut this back together. Or should we? We should just take it out, right? Phillips screwdriver. And then right here, we gotta take this loose so we can feed the wires through that panel. All right, let me get a Phillips screwdriver, take this ground wire loose. Got the Phillips screwdriver, and I'm gonna take this ground screw off. This wire has a ring terminal on it to secure it to the panel, which is really nice. Now I've got one of my hoses hooked up to the low side. You can see that I don't have the other one hooked up, and I'll tell you why. I'm gonna be using a low flow regulator, and I'm gonna be using nitrogen while I'm brazing. So I'm gonna take this stem, this little core out, so that when I pressurize it with nitrogen, run about two to three PSI, it comes out smoothly out of here and it doesn't build up pressure. But you can see there's zero PSI because this was quite a large leak. This is a gas package unit, so it uses natural gas for the heating fuel and then uses refrigerant for the air conditioning. So now let's take all the screws out of the equipment's top and then we'll get to the next step. Now, so that we can take the top off easily, we're gonna take out the outdoor fan. Before we can do that, there's a few things we have to do. One is we have to take the wires and get them through this panel. So we're gonna take and squeeze this fitting here. Just like that, then we can take, separate it, and then our wires will go through that panel. Now inside, we've got our wires held by some wire ties. So we've got one there, we've got one right here, and up at the very top, which it's hard to see, make sure you don't cut the wires. There's the last one. Now we can pull our wires through for our fan motor. The reason we're doing this is so that I can take and remove the outdoor fan. I like to keep this little sleeve on there. I'll take that off. And then I can take and remove the top cover easily. Now you can see the indoor coil. You see how I took this off? Because I was searching for the leak and I wasn't sure if it was in the outdoor coil or the indoor coil. 
going to remove this. And now we're going to go ahead and cut the connections for the coil so that we can take and start uh, cleaning out these leaves. Got to remove the last two panels before I can remove the outdoor coil, but you can see it's loose. Now we've got a few different options for cutting this copper. If you don't care about your snips, you can use this. You can use these longer tubing cutters if you can fit them in there. But for me, I'm probably going to use this. These are a smaller set. If you don't have a set of good tubing cutters, check out the link in the description and I'll put a set down there. So I can cut this right here and then pull that piece of copper out after I heat it up with the torches. I'll heat this joint up right here and pull that piece out. There's no refrigerant we have to recover because this was a large leak. Cut both those copper connections. Now we can remove this coil and because it's micro channel, it's aluminum. It is super light. Now before we can put the new coil in, there are a few different fittings that we need to take off of the old coil. That way our new coil lasts hopefully longer. But I'm gonna take and remove all these leaves. And before I do that, I'm gonna take and tape these. Or actually I can just take my channel locks and I'm just going to close these two copper connections tight all right I just while I'm moving leaves around I don't want to get anything in this all right now let's get some gloves put some gloves on and then one other thing I need to do before I start removing these leaves is next to this filter dryer there should be a screw on one side it looks like it is not over there there it is you're gonna have a difficult time trying to cut the connections next to the filter dryer uh, without removing this now I can take and remove all these leaves from underneath that filter dryer. You can tell definitely lacks some maintenance on this equipment. Right. Now that is satisfying right there. Now my next step is, since my indoor coal is a little bit dirty, and since we got some residual uh, leaf material and dirt in the bottom of the, of the outdoor unit section of this package unit, I'm going to take and put some coal cleaner on it and coal cleaner on this coal and go ahead and clean it before I stick the new outdoor coal in its place. All right, so we are gonna take this coal cleaner here and we're gonna spray the indoor coil with it, coat it up, let it set for five, 10 minutes. I want this unit to last as long as possible since my customers decided to spend around $3,000 on a repair. And I really didn't want to go this route, but I support the customer. I, get, I gave the two options. And they said this is the way they wanted to go, so I said, okay, that sounds good. I'm going to do the best job I can. I want this thing to last, so that's why I'm going to clean it up, make it as new as possible, and I'm going to spray that with coil cleaner and let all that set. I don't want any dirt touching my new coil. Unacceptable. All right, let's let it set, and then we'll wash it off. Now, we cannot put a nozzle on the end of this hose. This is the end of it's bent, but that's okay, because coal's not super dirty. And I'm gonna use the old thumb trick. Get 
look at that. Let that sit and drain, and then I'll come back and wash that some more. Now I'm going to clean out the pan, or the bottom, the bottom of the unit. Underneath the compressor. That looks so much better. So much better. Over here where this corner is. Out. Careful wasp like to build nest underneath this. Alright, now I'm gonna wash out that indoor cool one more time. And then we're gonna put the new coil in after we get it prepared. That's good. Alright, we're gonna prepare the new coil for the installation. How do we do that? We take the pieces off of the old coil I would call these the guards you'll need a flathead screwdriver that way you can actually get in between this little plastic piece and slip it on and then you can slide it on the new one the old one I just used a flathead screwdriver so but you can actually slide off see like that right there Now, that will go right here. Now this one, we are going to take and put our flathead screwdriver in here like this. And then pry it up like that right there. Now, take this piece here and then slip it on. You gotta be careful because you can easily damage these micro channel coils. That's in place. Now, slide this piece right here inside. And then, goes right on there like that. Now, the other pieces we got to take off are right here. This piece, this piece, this piece, this piece, and this piece. All right, so now, I'm going to take and lay this coil down and put all these pieces in place. And this just keeps the bottom row of this micro channel coil from touching that metal base. All right. Now, after we prepare this coil for the installation, which now it's prepared, we are going to unbraze these two connections here, here. I'm going to cut the filter dryer out, but before I do that, I'm going to sand the joints that I'm going to use to reinstall a new filter dryer. So let's do that. All right, I'm going to be brazing with nitrogen. If you don't know how, check out the video on how to braze copper. I put it down in the link in the description. Adjust my low flow regulator. We got in between two to five PSI. Going inside the refrigeration system. Now, this connection here, I need to ream this out. That looks better. That's a trumpet. You ever heard that? <laughs> All right, now, our filter dryer is not bi directional. It's only single direction. And the refrigerant flows into the compressor from the evaporator coil 
out of the discharge line into the outdoor coil. It goes through the outdoor coil and then comes out the liquid line and through the filter dryer. So if it goes out of the liquid line, uh, from, or the outlet pipe of the condenser and it goes into the filter dryer, that means the arrow has to be pointing this direction, not this direction, okay? So I'm going to install this now like that and then I'm going to install this pipe here but I'm going to take this off first and connect this one and then connect this one all right beautiful now I've got nitrogen flowing I'm going to make sure I don't burn these wires I'm going to take this piece off after I braze the dryer in. And if you want to make this easier, you can take, because this is 3 8 we can bend this out here like this. All right. And now we can reach everything. Look at that. So I'll go ahead and braze those two connections. And then I'll unbraze this. And I'll unbraze this piece. All right. So here we go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Bend my copper. I'm sorry. Bend my silphos. My brazing rod. Heat up the joint. You can put a piece on there. See if it melts, but oh look at that. all right bend another piece of that seal foss and then heat up this next joint connecting that filter dryer to the liquid line can put a piece of seal floss on there, heat it up. Once it's heated up, go all the way around. Like so. All right. That's in place. Put my solder away for now. And I'm going to crank it up just a notch because I want to take these two pieces off pretty quickly. That one's off. And then this one up here. Monitor your nitrogen just to make sure then it's still on the setting that you set it on. If you come over here, you can see it's still in between two to five PSI. So we were flowing nitrogen the whole time we were brazing. That'll help reduce that black oxide that's produced. And then we'll have less of a chance of having a restriction in the micro channel coil that we just installed or our TXV or our thermostatic expansion valve. Or if you're using a metering device like an orifice, now, I'm going to set the new coil in place. Right there. One of these rubber feet came off. So, I'm definitely putting it back on. <laughs> and then, on the end here so I know it's lined up put my screw in now let's go check out my connections I've got this connection here 
and that is the outlet. And this connection here is the inlet. Hot discharge gas goes inside the condenser. The heat is rejected. That hot superheated vapor gets uh, condensed, desuperheated, subcooled, and it becomes a high pressure liquid. And then it comes out as that high pressure liquid enters the filter dryer goes through the liquid line to the evaporators, um, well, it goes to the metering device. The metering device makes it uh, drop pressure and then it becomes a lower pressure liquid entering that evaporator. All right, now I've got these shoved in. I'm gonna heat them up, shove them in a little bit more. And now I'm gonna take out my little stem. And the reason I'm doing that is because I don't have any areas where the pipe is open where the nitrogen can flow freely and I don't want the pressure to build up. So, and that's what's gonna happen. All right, so let me take this out. All right, taking this out like that. There we go. Now let's heat up the connections and push the pieces of copper inside and then we'll braze them up. And that's a striker. You can tell it's not all the way in there and I'm definitely going to press it inside because you want to get it in there. Now press this one in. See that? Oh, looks like I need to hold that one. So I will do the bottom one first. All right, bend my solder. This is 15% silver solder. Looks like it's good enough. Ooh, look at that. Put a little more just because I like to make sure some around the back. That's good. Now this one, it may stay. I'm not sure. I have to heat up one side. I'll build up some copper, or I mean some solder on this side. And then I'll hit this side. back area you can see there's a little gap there all right let that dry or let that uh, cool down just a minute and then we're gonna hit this side all right now looks good now let's pressure test it soak test the connections that we brazed make sure there's no leaks make sure it holds pressure and then we're gonna use the vacuum pump micron gauge make sure we can pull a good vacuum all right, let's stick the stem back in. Boop. Stem valve inserted. Tighten it up. And then let's connect our high side. We have removed the low flow regulator. And if you need a low flow regulator, you don't have one, check out the link in the description. Get a low flow regulator. That is what you need if you're a professional especially if you're doing a VRF install. You got multiple braze connections. All right, let's open this up and let's increase the pressure. Oh, I've got a leak. Oh, it's right there. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put at least 200, maybe 300.
there's 150. All right, we'll put some pressure on it. We'll do some leak testing. All right, we've got 200 PSI. You don't want to put too much in because if you do have a leak, you know, having to waste that nitrogen sometimes is no fun, especially if you don't have a lot of nitrogen. So now, sprayed every connection. I'm gonna take and use my inspection mirror and take a look at each side, especially the bottom areas where that filter dryer is connected, just to make sure. Also, put your finger on it. See if you feel anything, and then we've got 200 PSI, we're just gonna let it set for 30 minutes. So if I don't see any bubbles, then I'm gonna let it set for 30 minutes, and if the pressure doesn't go down, then I know for sure we don't have any leaks. Then we'll hook up the pump. It held pressure. I'm gonna release the nitrogen. I'm gonna hook up my vacuum pump and pull a vacuum. Now I've got the NAVAC pump hooked up, got the micron gauge, and I'm gonna turn the pump on, open the valve, micron gauge on, and then I'm gonna open the ballast. If you don't know how to use a vacuum pump and you wanna learn how, I'll put a video down below so you can learn how to use a vacuum pump. All right, I'm pulling down into a vacuum, and once it's below 3,000 right here, I'm going to go ahead and close the ballast. We'll pull a good vacuum and then we're going to use our scales and we're going to factory charge the equipment. Got a good vacuum pulled so far. I'm going to let that keep running. I was going to put the panel back on and you can see where this is crushed and it's not setting on that coil very well. So I'm going to take the panel off and I'm gonna pop that dent out and then put it back on. Looks like I also need to clean this top before I leave. That new coil is nice and shiny and so is that top. I used a rag, some water, some coil cleaner, let it sit on the top, clean that top up so it would look nice. So we're ready to charge it up. I gotta figure out how much refrigerant the equipment holds. How do I do that? Check out the tag on the front. And it looks like it holds four pounds, zero ounces, 410A factory charge. So I'm gonna make sure everything is closed up. I turn the tank on and flip it upside down. Turn the scales on. And then we're gonna bleed the air out. We're going to charge through the high side, fill up that outdoor coil. Let's put four pounds in it. Three pounds, 15 ounces. Let's go ahead and stop it. Four pounds exactly. Love it when a plan comes together. Close the gauges. Now for the outdoor fan, and the wiring, you can see I'm routing the wires through the hole in the top panel. And then I'm going to take those wires and go behind these two lines here. So make sure they don't get tangled up. And bring them behind these two copper lines. Pull them through this panel. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take a wire tie and I'm gonna put a wire tie right here. That way those wires don't have a chance of going into the fan blade. And that's the reason we had a couple wire ties. So wire tie it, make it nice and tight, and then I'm gonna reconnect uh, the wires. Black on load side of the contactor, purple on the common terminal of the capacitor, brown on the fan terminal of the dual capacitor, and then reconnect that ground wire. I'll get that done and start it up, make sure everything works and it's charged, there's no restrictions. All right, Whew. load the old coil up, take it off. See that wire tie? And then the wires are behind those copper lines. Make sure you wanna tighten this up, not too tight. 
maybe right there, cut this, pull the slack right here, and then put this piece in around the wires. Got my gauges hooked up, got my little temperature clamp connected to my meter. That way I can measure the suction line temperature and check the superheat. We're using an orifice as our metering device. Let's go ahead and check the charge by jumping out the equipment outside at the board. The reason we're doing that is because the homeowner is not home and I'm not going to finish this install and not check the cooling to make sure everything's working. So gauge is hooked up, clamp on the suction line of the compressor, that's the inlet pipe. Also, while everything was disconnected, I checked the bearings. How do you do that? You go back and forth on the shaft. All right, I've got R and Y jumped out using my little alligator clips. And I took the power off of the transformer just to make sure that it didn't energize while I was putting the alligator cl clips on. Smooth sailing. I'm going to let the equipment run for at least 10 or 15 minutes and then we're going to check the pressures and the temperatures. If you want to learn how to charge using superheat and subcooling, you want to learn different methods of charging air conditioners, I'm going to put a few links to a few videos down below so you can learn how. I had to use my sawzall and I cut a bunch of little trees around the equipment when I first got here because I was unable to get to each side of the package air conditioning system. It's critical that you keep the surrounding areas around a package unit cleaned up. That way you can maintenance it properly. Equipment's been running maybe 10 minutes. I kept this panel in place somewhat. That way it's pulling air through the coil. If you leave this panel off, it will affect the pressure. So keep this panel in place best you can. That way it's not pulling through this section of the unit and needs to pull through the coil. So suction line temperature is 54. Looks like it's going down and our low side pressure is 100. Uh, so this is about 32, so 32 and 54. Well, 53, it's about 21 degrees of super heat right now. That's looking pretty good. 200 on our high side pressure. So this looks pretty good. I'm gonna let it run for a little longer and make sure everything is uh, the way it should be. Looks good. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you liked it. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe, smash that bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. And I hope that you learned something. If you did learn something, let me know what it was down in the comments. If you got a question, definitely ask me a question because questions can become new content. I really appreciate all the viewers, definitely all my members. Remember, there's giveaways every month and I want you to be a part of that to learn more about the giveaways definitely check out my live videos I do every single month. If you want more videos like this of real live in the field experience as a technician, maybe you want to be a better technician, I've got over 600 videos of technician work in the field on my playlist titled HVAC Tips for Technicians. If you're already a technician, maybe you want to learn more and you want to get to an advanced level. Maybe you want to be a contractor, have your own business. Check out my playlist titled HVAC Training Courses. I've put together content for members only that was requested by members because they knew exactly what they needed and they wanted to know how to get to that next level and maybe start their own business. So go check out those videos and I've got titles on those videos like a geothermal training, sales tr training, how to get more customers for your HVAC business, how to make more money with your HVAC business, a mini split sizing, how to size duct work, how to size equipment, how to price equipment. All of those videos are there because of members. So thank you so much, guys. You rock. I really appreciate it. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.